Today we're starting chapter 5, and chapter 5 is dealing with a topic called relations and functions. And we're going to look at section 5.1 relations and section 5.2 functions. If you want to take a look at your book and follow along, you can there as well. So our learning intentions today, or by the end of this video, I'm hoping you are able to understand the words set, element, relation, and function. You need to understand what those words mean in relation to math. Now, number two, you're going to be able to understand and identify a domain and a range. And I put a big asterisk beside this one because this one is important. This will haunt you through grade 10, grade 11, and grade 12 if you don't get this. So it's really important that you understand the difference between a domain and a range. And um, that's all we're going to look at today, and then later on we'll look at using them more in depth about how we're going to use them. And lastly, to be able to switch from two variable two variables, x and y, to function notation. So there's two variable notation, there's function notation, and how to switch back and forth from each. Let's start today by looking at some definitions. And I put all your definitions here in one spot. And what we have first is a set. A set is a collection of distinct objects. And by distinct, meaning each one is different. So an example, penny, nickel, dime, quarter. Okay, we don't have penny twice because it's distinct objects, each one has to be different. So we have one, two, three, four pieces in this set. Another example of a set would be one, five, 10, 25. And I pick those numbers for a reason. It's just the value of each of the coins I mentioned at the start. Now an element, an element is any one object in a set. So a set is made up of a bunch of elements. In the case above, there was four elements. A penny is an element, the nickel is an element, dime is an element, quarter is an element. There are four elements in this set. And now a relation. So if you think of a relationship, um, think of a family, you're related by brother and sister, you're related by mom and um, son or mom and daughter. So there's a relationship, there's a link of some kind. So a relationship associates, so two things are associated, or describes a link between the two sets. So looking at our two sets above, we had penny, nickel, dime, quarter was set one. One, five, ten, twenty was set two. The relationship between these two sets, if we set um, the one up on the left, penny, nickel, dime, quarter, and then we had one, five, ten, twenty-five, so we have our two sets. The relationship or the relation could be said that set one is the name of the value of set two. So, or a penny, we could say the relationship is worth set two number of cents. So a penny is worth, that's a relationship, how much it's worth, one cent. A nickel, relationship is worth five cents. A dime, the relationship is worth 10 cents. So a relationship here is how much the coin is worth. Okay. So a relationship will always link them. If they're not related, then there's no relationship. Now next, we have some more definitions. And the thing I mentioned uh, in our learning intentions was domain and range, very important. Gonna going to hit this a lot coming forward and into future grades. A domain is the set of first elements in a relationship. So when I was over here and I had my coins on the left, values on the right, the left side is my domain. It is the first set. Okay. So back to our definition here. Domain is the set of first elements in a relationship. The range is the set of second elements in a relationship. So in my example here, the range is the second set. And because this goes in this direction, a penny is worth one cent. One isn't worth a penny. That doesn't work. We could have rearranged this um, so that the value is on the left. But what would happen then is we would have a different relationship. For this relationship, a penny is worth one cent. The left, first set, domain, second set on the right is our range. And this is going to get a lot more um, in-depth as we go, but this is the base definition we're going to start working with. 
And next up is a function. A function is a special relation, because you can have lots of relationships. Um, a function, though, is a special relation where each domain element has exactly one range element. So each domain has exactly one range. And we can see that here. A penny is worth one cent. A nickel is worth five cents. A dime is worth 10. A quarter is worth 25. Okay? Each has only one. Okay. Now, looking over here, so let's looking at our function. I guess I've already given you the example of the first one. So a function is a special relationship where each domain element has exactly one range element. If I was to do something like this, one, two, four, and then I had bicycle, unicycle, motorcycle, car. This one, first, what is our relationship? One is the number of tires on a unicycle. So our domain is the first on the left. Range is the second. It's on the right. We have a set of numbers. We have a set of transportation. We have each one of these as an element. Domain is the first. Range is the second. Relationship is, or the relation is how they're related. So we usually our relation is, is number of tires on there's our relationship. So one is the number of tires on a unicycle. Two is the number of tires on a bicycle. Two is also the number of tires on a motorcycle. Four is the number of tires on a car. So looking through all our definitions again, we have a set, one, two, and four. We have a set, bike, unicycle, motorbike, and car. Domain on the first set, range is the second set, and our relationship is the number of tires on. So one is the number of tires on a unicycle. Now is this a function? Think for a second. A special relation where each domain element has exactly one range element. So this domain element, it has exactly one range. Good. This domain element, because each domain element has exactly one range. Does this domain element have more than one range? Uh-oh. It does. So because this domain has more than one range, not a function. Okay, if you're making notes, draw this up, write down not function on it, okay? But if I was to take this and change it, and I had unicycle, bicycle, I can't spell bicycle. Uh, motorcycle. Car. And then we had one, two, four. So this is different. Because now our domain is the first one. Range is the second one. The relationship is has this many tires. That's our relationship. So a unicycle has this many tires. One. A bicycle has this many tires. Two. A motorcycle has this many tires. Two. A car has this many tires. Four. So is this a function? Back to our definition. A function is a special relation where each domain element, so each of these elements, has exactly one range. Unicycle has exactly one range. Good. Bicycle has one range. Good. Motorcycle has one range. Good. Car has one range. Good. So this is a function. Even though 2 has 
You can see bicycle, motorcycle, it doesn't matter. We're worried about each domain having only one range. Unicycle has just a one, bicycle has a one, motorcycle has one. So notice there's only one arrow coming out of each of our domain elements. That makes it a function. Now I'm going to show you three ways that we can express different sets together. And sometimes they're relate sorry, they're always relations. But sometimes they are functions and sometimes they're not. So what I have here is arrow diagrams, ordered pairs, or a table. And this is just ways that we can express data. So here I have one set made up of tennis, hockey, baseball, and badminton. And I have another set, a ball, a puck, and a shuttlecock. So the way these are linked are sports and equipment used. So an arrow diagramming diagram simply draws an arrow from one set to the other. For example, tennis uses a ball, hockey uses a puck, baseball uses a ball, and badminton uses a shuttlecock. And just as a little practice from the last one, is this a function? So it's a function if each domain has only one range. Tennis is only going to one spot, hockey's only going to one spot, baseball's only going to one spot, badminton's going to one spot, so it is a function. Next, ordered pairs. Ordered pairs, um, if you go back to um, previous grades and you had an XY grid and the point over here, over 2, up 1, you'd label it as 2, comma 1, that is an ordered pair. It's in order X, Y. Well, we can do ordered pairs for any sets. Here, our ordered pairs would be tennis. Always put the left element first, then the range second. So domain, then range. Tennis with a ball. The next one is hockey with a puck. Then we have baseball with a ball and badminton with a shuttlecock. So these are ordered pairs. They're ordered because it goes sport, equipment, sport, equipment, sport, equipment. And they're pairs because they're always in pairs. Okay, the equipment, sport with equipment, sport with equipment, sport with equipment. And the last way to show this is a table. Think of it, you know, you've seen tables for lots of grades now. Just column A, column B. Sport is tennis, then we have hockey, then we have baseball, and then we have badminton. And the equipment was a ball, a puck, a ball, and a shuttlecock. And so that's a typical table. So you should be able to express these or all the information in different ways. Back to the last example when we had penny, dime, penny nickel, dime, quarter, and 1, 5, 10, 25. You should be able to show that in a table as ordered pairs or arrow diagrams. And then once you have these, you should be able to notice, is it a function or not? Okay. So this is a function because tennis, hockey, baseball, badminton only show up once each. If, let's just say I had tennis in here again, and maybe we're playing some funny kind of tennis with a shuttlecock, it is no longer a function because tennis, the domain, has a range ball, and tennis, a at sport, has a domain shuttlecock. So the domain, tennis, can't have different ranges. Not a function if that's true. And down here it would be the same. If tennis shows up twice and has different ranges, not okay. Otherwise, that would make it not a function. So the last thing we're going to work on today is working on writing equations. So to write equations, they can either be in function notation or two-variable notation. And two-variable notation is what you're probably used to. So example, number of cans and how much do you get in deposit for them. So one can is worth five cents in deposit. Two cans is worth 10 cents. Three cans, 15 cents. Hopefully you can see every can you add, it goes up five cents. So if we call the number of cans C and the deposit D, then we typically explain equations in terms of the range on the left. 
So the range, the second set, remember domain is first set, range is second set. The range, the deposit, is, sorry, it's five times the number of cans. So D equals five C. The deposit is five times the number of cans. So that would be a two variable equation, variable D, variable C. And they said, well, what if you had 20 cans? Well, then you'd say for 20 cans, my cans, I have 20 of them, my deposit would equal 100 cents, which is $1. So this is two variable notation. Okay. Now, function notation simply ex describes your range in terms of the domain. So what we say is the deposit in terms of the number of cans. So it'll always be deposit bracket, or sorry, it'll be a range, bracket your domain amount. So the range was D, the domain was C. So D, and it's called D of C when we have these brackets. So D of C equals 5C. Okay. So the deposit in terms of cans is five times the number of cans, five cents times the number of cans. So a function notation will always have this bracket look to it. It'll be a range bracket in terms of domain. Two variable notation will just have a letter and a letter. Okay. Function notation has the brackets. Two variable just has two variables. Okay. Um, let's look at another example of how this might look. Um, so if I was to graph a line, which we haven't started graphing lines, but yet yeah, the graph of a line may look like this. And this equation would be y equals x plus 1, okay, if I have x and y, okay. So I've just made this up. You don't know how, you don't have to know how to come up with this yet. This is actually going to be in your next chapter, but you do need to understand how this relates to function notation. This is two variable notation. The name of this line is y equals x plus 1. Now the function notation is always expressed by putting the domain value into a bracket. y of x equals x plus 1. So just like here, when it was the deposit equals 5 cents for every can, in function notation, the deposit in terms of the number of cans equals 5 cents times every can. Up here, same. The height of y is the value of x plus 1. In function notation, so again, this is two variable because there's only two variables. This one's called function notation because there's the brackets here. So y expressed as part of x, so y of x is x plus 1. The one tricky thing to this is we will never use y of x, ever. y of x will always get changed to f of x. So it's special. Over here, d of c, that's okay. Uh, we could have h of t, that's a very common one. It might look like this. h of t stands for the height over time. If you're in a plane, how high are you at one second? How high are you at five seconds? How high are you at ten minutes into the flight? So how high are you in respect to time? These are all okay. The only one that always changes is y always turns into f of x, and f just stands for function. It's telling us, hey, this is a function, okay? And it is a function if you go back to the definition, look up, well, x is our set one, y is our set two. Um, you could maybe start to study that a little bit, and uh, you'd be really getting ahead of where we're at, and be better prepared when we move on in the future. So, again, f of x, 
is a fancy way of saying y. Okay? So f of x and y are the exact same thing. f of x is just the function notation of y. Your assignment for section 5.1 and 5.2 is page 262, 3, 4, and 9. And that's dealing with the first part before we got all the functions. It was um, sets, arrow diagrams, things like that. And 270 is questions 4 to 8. I want you to do all letters A, B, C, D, E. Um, there's not actually a lot of them. And that's dealing with function, domain, range, and things of that nature. And then next day, we're actually going to continue on a little bit more in this section. Um, but this gives you a good start with it. Good luck. Stay classy, math class.